and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. For good and all the people on YouTube, hope all today, hope you're feeling grand and all is well in your world. Hello there, everybody. This is the fourth time I'm doing this intro because the playing section has got me so hyped up. I'm a bit red faced and a bit kind of like a bit out of it. Anyway, it's not about that today, people. Tube is about these beautiful guitars here that I can't hold like that because they're too heavy. Anyway, I'm just weak. You're just a weak boy, Dave. Anyway, moving along. These are Daniel's Guitars Evos, people of the tube, and aren't they beautiful? My God, especially just look at that. Look, look, just look at it. Filth, filth, I tell you. Anyway, <sighs> calm down, Dave. Calm down. <sighs> Deep breaths. So, I met Darren, uh, the builder of these guitars and the owner of the company, uh, at the Birmingham Guitar Show earlier this year, and... Um, was like really impressed with his guitars, really liked his guitars. I mean, I, they were just cool. And they said that they're kind of like, they're familiar, but slightly different as well, you know, which I like. I really like that. So uh, we stayed in contact after the Bourbon Guitar Show uh, because you can't really get an idea of what anything's really like at a guitar show because there's so much going on, so much overstimulation. It's really hard to know exactly what a guitar's like. So uh, when he said, oh, would you like to borrow some of my guitars to demo? I was like, yes, please. So uh, he very kindly bought them up to me and we were messing around with them and he left them with me. And here we are today, people tube. So like I say, these are the Daniels Guitars Evos and they are amazing. They're kind of semi-traditional, but not. You know, there's all sorts of different things going on here. So let's start with this purple one. It's actually purple, people It looks blue. But it's actually not. It's actually purple. I, I don't think... Like, when you get it in light, it goes blue. But it's actually purple. And it's a stunning colour. Um, so, let's talk specs of what specs I can remember. I'm not I'm not very spec-minded when it comes down to guitars. If I like the feel and the sound of a guitar, I don't really care what it is. So, I always forget when people say, Oh, it's got this, this, and this. I'm like, I don't remember any of that. So, it is a Gibson scale length. Um, uh, what we got? We've got two Filtertron-esque pickups from Mojo UK pickup, uh, Mojo Mojo pickups here. Um, got this kind of tremolo-y thing. It's I, I don't I, I don't I don't remember what that's called. Uh, master volume, master tone, kind of a stop to, uh, stop tailpiece for bridge. Um, extraordinarily comfy neck. It's a real it's a real vintage Gibson neck. It's almost got that slight V that the old 59 Les Pauls have. It's very, very comfy, very comfy neck. I love his headstocks as well. I think the headstocks look amazing. Um, it's got the, probably one of the most gorgeous neck heel calves ever. Check this out. Look at that. That is so comfy, people of That is amazing. Uh, and it's just amazing. So you got mahogany body on this one, mahogany neck. Uh, I don't know if this one has a maple cap. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it does. But if Darren's in the comment section below, hopefully he'll be able to fill us in uh, with more uh, specs on what these guitars have. And I'll pin the comment to the top. So uh, for me, this guitar, although I love it, it, it wasn't really for me. This isn't the one I would pick if I was going for one of these. Just, but the reason being is the, Mojo, the Filtertrons. I'm not really a Filtertron pickup fan. They don't really do it for me, Filtertrons. They never have. I've been very lucky in playing quite a lot of old kind of vintage Gretches. And I've never, ever really got on with the Filtertron sound. It doesn't really... It doesn't really float my boat, if you know what I mean, people of the tube. So I kind of struggled with the sound of this guitar. And I also struggled with the Bigsby S kind of tremolo. I don't really like this kind of trem it just feels a bit kind of like um i can't think of the word floaty it just doesn't feel i, I like to feel there's something behind the trem and these ones just feel a bit floaty they're really nice for that kind of like you know really uh for that kind of thing but i don't really like it it does it kind of it made it difficult for me to kind of get around and also i don't i um i didn't really get on with where the volume's situated either uh, because of the tremolo. If the tremolo was out of the way, that wouldn't be a problem. But because the tremolo, when you're playing this, is perfectly in line with the volume control, uh, after a while, I've got kind of muscle memory of where it was. So it's not a massive issue. 
But I kind of struggled to, when I initially started playing this guitar, to find the volume control, and I was getting kind of like hung up on the tremolo arm, and it wasn't fun to start with. But anyway, um, but this guitar, because of the trem and the pickups, it didn't really speak to me as much as this one did, and I'll get to that one in a sec. But, my God, did it sound and play great. And again, if you're after that kind of Gretsch kind of voice... There it is. You know, it really is. I mean, that that, that is unreal. I, I, I don't know if this is the first time I've tried Mojo pickups, but my God, they're good. <laughs> they are good. Anyway, uh, this guitar is really nice. I say that, that neck heel carve is just ridiculous. But like I say, for me, the pickups and the trem, that kind of like... It, it just kind of like put it just a little bit out of my comfort zone for my own liking. And it, it was fun to play and I enjoyed it. But it wasn't really... It, it, it wouldn't be one I'd pick just because... If, if I did have this guitar, I'd have to get rid of the pickups, uh, change them and get rid of a trem and change that. But it's an amazing guitar. I love how it's a kind of a hybrid of all sorts of different things as well. It's really cool. It's very, very nice. And again, yeah, Gibson Scaling. Uh, all finished in nitro as well. These guitars are finished in nitro. Uh, this guitar does have checking lines that are starting to appear. Uh, I hide out the uh, pickup on camera. Uh, there's some... There's one just there, but I doubt very much it'll come through. Oh, you can kind of see one between the pickups there. There you go. So they are nitro, and they're very, very cool. These necks are fantastic. Oh, my God. Uh, these are handmade as well, people too. These are not kind of like um, machine-made. Uh, Darren himself, he makes these from nothing. And because of that, every one of them is slightly different, which is cool. So... Um, great guitar, this one. You heard it in the intro jam. So moving on to the next one, the, the Tobacco Burst one. Now this guitar, Puma Tube. Holy bejesus. It gets me a little bit hot under the collar, this one. It's got... It. It. It really has. So this one's slightly different. Uh, it's mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, rosewood fingerboard. Uh, but... I don't remember what the wood is on the top, but my God, is it stunning. It's got this gorgeous, like, real traditional tobacco burst finish, uh, which is stunning. Um, being nitro as well, and also kind of like, Darren kind of uses kind of pyrocrat things. I can imagine this will fade over time, the tobacco burst. Um, and it's got this red back. Oh my God, this guitar. This guitar is immense. Anyway, it's got that amazing, amazing neck carb, which looks even better in red. I mean, look at just look how amazing that is. Again, it's so comfy. That neck carb is so comfy. Oh, the neck on this one as well is slightly skinnier uh, up the top end than that one. Not not by a great deal, but just a little bit. And it's just a little bit more fifty nine Les Paulish. And it's it's got that kind of slight V to it, but it's like not a horrible V. It's like a very 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 soft V, and it's just heaven. Um, this one also has a slight belly cut, which I'm getting in the fuse like you can see. You can see it curve. And just that, people of tube, just that tiny little bit of belly cut made this guitar lean back enough. So when I was playing it, I wasn't gouging my arm open on the binding, which was happening with the purple one. I've actually got kind of this red mark on my arm. I don't know how well you, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But it was kind of like, it, I, I, it's one of the main problems I have with Les Pauls and Telecasters in general is my arm tends to rub uh, because they don't have belly cuts. And that one doesn't have a belly cut, but this one does. And because of that, it just lent it back just enough to be outrageously comfortable. And you'll hear this one in the outro jam. But I, I'm in love with this one. This one is insane. you got kind of like this weird kind of Telecaster style Les Paul thing. I don't even know. It's all sorts of stuff, this one, people do, but it's amazing. Uh, you got these kind of clues on tile tulip machine heads. I also love that the selector switch on this guitar, although it's on a Telecaster plate, is slightly angled like a Strat, and it makes it easier to get. So I hope you can kind of see that. Uh, because usually with Telecasters, because they're kind of horizontal with their selector switch, I find it really hard to kind of like manipulate that. Not so with this one. Uh, it's just a three way selector. So back is the humbucker, in the middle is these two, and then at the, uh, when it's all the way front, it's just a P90. Wraparound tailpiece makes it rock solid for tuning. Master volume, master tone, no bells and whistles. It's an absolute machine. And it sounds amazing, looks amazing. That red on the back is absolutely stunning. The burst on the front is stunning. 
This one's all checked as well. People check. Again, I don't think you'll be able to see the checking lines. This one's got more checking lines than that one. It's it's getting it's getting more and more checked up. The lacquer's kind of sunk into the wood as well, so you can see the wood grain. It's oh my god. This one is insane. Anyway, Pure Tube. Uh, I thought for this video, I thought I'd do things a bit differently. Basically, what I thought I'd do is I'd do an intro jam on the purple one. Well, intro song on the purple one. Do the talky bit in the middle, just showing you around the guitars and what I remember of them, because I don't remember much when it comes down to specs. Stupid. Uh, and then basically I'm going to play you out on this Evo here. My God, these things are amazing. They really are. I, lo I love this one. I really do love this one. Anyway. Um, yeah, for prices and all that kind of thing because they're handmade uh description box below has a link to his page his instagram and all that kind of thing so you can contact him there and talk about all that there other than that people tube i hope you enjoyed the noises this thing is going to make uh and enjoyed the noises that made uh because they're great they really are i really really like these they're traditional but not and i like that so because it's like when you're playing it it's got all that kind of cut that that kind of thing of what we know but looks totally different and feels different as well it's just cool it's just cool so anyway i'm going to play some blues for you now i'm going to attempt to play some blues for you on the on the evo sunburst evo here i really need to calm down i am proper hyper and i'm all i feel myself i'm all red faced and sweaty and, and just going a bit over the top that's what good guitars do to you, though. That's what guitars do to you in general, really. Make you go mental. <laughs> and I love it. Anyway, massive thanks to Darren at Daniel's Guitars for loaning me these guitars. Like I said, I do have another two of his guitars you'll see at the end of the month. They'll be offsets. Super cool retro-looking guitars. Um, as I say, we'll see them more then. Uh, until then, people, tube, or until the next video, uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. Have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. Um, goodbye now. I hope you enjoyed the noises the thing makes. And I hope you enjoyed the noises that thing made. I'll see you again.